Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is week 12 in my series on card sketches that are known as card layouts to help you lay out the images and elements on your cards. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll be able to find a link down in the video description below, which will lead you over to the card layout or the sketch. Here's the card we're going to be creating together today, and I'm excited to give you some great tips about putting it together so those lines are nice and straight. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the small bell icon that's next to the subscribe button and you'll receive notifications of when I'm live here on YouTube as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. Here's a good close up of the card we're going to be creating together today. Now on this one, I actually use the vase builder punch to punch out all the pieces here. And then the more I looked at it, I thought, well, why did I punch them? I could have stamped them right on top of here. So I'm going to teach you a variation to this today in the video for this card. Make sure you stick with me to the end because I have two other samples to share with you using this exact same layout. I'm going to start by using the rectangle stitched framelits to create that white panel for our vases. I've pulled out the size that I'm going to use here and I have my Sizzix die cutting machine ready. I'm using a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'll put that stitched rectangle die right on top of it. I'm going to be using three colors. I have So Saffron, Poppy Parade, and Pacific Point. I'm going to start with the So Saffron. I have one of the solid vases here from the stamp set called Varied Vases. Lots and lots of fun. A very large stamp set and it also has a coordinating vase builder punch that you can purchase that punches out those images. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the current catalog, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on contact me and provide me with your information. I'm gonna ink up that image in the Sew Saffron and I'm gonna stamp this vase over to the far left side. I'm switching over to the Poppy Parade ink and I've chosen a different solid vase image from that stamp set and we'll go ahead and ink that up. This one will get stamped to the far right side. Now while I have that ink pad out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that small tulip that I'm going to be using. I'll stamp that in Poppy Parade. I have stamped it once in each of the So Saffron and Pacific Point already. I did those right before you joined me. Here's that vase builder punch. Do you see the tulip here? So we're going to turn that upside down and then we'll slide that inside of here and that's going to pop out that image. On that same scrap piece of paper, I'm switching over now to the Pacific Point ink and I have my last solid image base and I'll stamp that here. The punch is going to do all the work for us. You can see that this base is upside down so I'm just going to turn my cardstock and I'm going to slide that down inside. This vase will now go here near the bottom. Now I want to stamp a stem to hold my tulips and I'm going to be using the Memento Black ink for that because I know I don't want the flower to be up too high. I'm only going to stamp a portion of this in the black ink. So I'll go ahead and ink that up. Knowing that my vase is going to fall here, I'll go ahead and I'll stamp that one stem here. I've just cleaned my stamp on my Stampin' Scrub or the Stampin' Chamois, whichever you use. And now I'm going to ink it up again with a smaller portion. I do recommend cleaning between usage because if you want it a little bit shorter and you have residual ink left, it's going to make it look longer. So I'm going to ink this one up as well. And then this one's going to go off to the far left side. I've cleaned my stamp once again. And this time I'm going to go even a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to attach this one over to the right side. I'm going to add my vase using a Stampin' Dimensional. So I'm going to turn that upside down. I've got my dimensionals here and I'll just use one here down in the center. And then this is going to get mounted here at the bottom of the stem. Remember that small tulip? So we have that one here. And then remember I mentioned that I had stamped several others, one in each of those three colors. I'm going to use my Take Your Pick Pickup tool. This putty end is wonderful to helping me lift up these little small pieces. And with my mini dimensionals now, I'm going to use the paper piercing tool attachment on that same tool. And I'm going to place a small mini dimensional on the back of each of those tulips. I'm going to remove the paper backings and then I'm going to add my tulips to my stem. So I have one here in the center and then I have my other here and then my final one, which is the Pacific point. And then I can change the height of this one just by moving the bloom down just a little bit. 
Now I'm ready to stamp the greeting. I'm going back to the black memento ink and I've chosen the words from that same stamp set that say hello and I'll stamp that here near the bottom. Now that our focal point is all finished, let's go ahead and add the stripes to the card base. This is four and a quarter by 11. I scored it in half right before you joined me. I'm a big fan of my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. Now the secret to getting this straight is by using the grid paper. Stampin' Up! sells this in an 18 inch long sheet with a pad of 100, as well as the smaller size, which is seven by seven. This was initially intended for our stamp positioning tool, but it works wonderful in a tight area. So I'm gonna lay my cardstock on here, and I'm gonna use these half inch grid lines here to help me align those stripes. The next best tip is the silicone craft sheet. Because the strips are a half an inch wide, you're gonna find it probably a little challenging to get your adhesive on there without getting it on your work surface. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to the silicone craft sheet, which makes it a great accompaniment here in my studio. So I'm just gonna line this once again on the grid paper. I'm looking to keep it as straight as possible. I'm using those grid lines. So I'm coming down a half an inch and I'm going to attach this going across. Can you see the line here and here? That's what I'm aligning to. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the Sew Saffron strip. And then using my grid paper as a guide, I'll come down a half an inch and then I'm gonna attach this going across. I'm gonna repeat this pattern now going all the way down the card using the Poppy Parade as my next color. Now once those are all in place, I'm gonna open it up to the inside. No matter how careful I am, I can be off. In this case, it's just under an eighth. So I'll take my long tip scissors and I'll come in here from the inside of the card and I'll use that white card base as a guide to trim away any excess. That's another great tip for you in case you've got a little bit longer ends like I do. We'll come back here to our image. We'll flip that over and now we're gonna add dimensionals to the back side. I like to make sure that my dimensionals are well balanced because I'm very aware that my card is going to go through the mail meter at the post office. And if they're not balanced, the card image can actually come out lopsided. And that'll get mounted right here in the center. I promised you two other cards using this exact same layout and here they are. The first one is using designer series paper. This is from the Woven Thread series. And I just stuck to a very simple palette of designer paper strips and then solid image with a greeting. And then my final card uses the Brights designer series paper in the Bermuda Bay. I used a little bit of silver foil here to create the happy. And then of course my greeting and add a little bit of rhinestones to pick up that silver. I would love to know which one of these is your favorite. Would you leave me a comment below? And while you're here, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.